Hi, I'm Jesse at SteroPro.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Godox V860 version 3. This is the latest flash in the V series. Let's take a look what's inside the box. So no matter which version of this flash you decide to get, they all come with the same thing. So whether it's Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Pentax, or Olympus, everything in the box is identical. <laughs> So let's open this Nikon box and see what we have inside. First off, you're going to have your manual, which we don't really need because we're going over everything here. Then we have the actual flash itself, which is included in this protective case. We have our flash foot. We've got our battery. And then we have our charging pieces. So there are two ways to charge this. Uh, you can take the cradle itself and the included cable plug directly in here and then into any USB port to charge it. If you don't want to do that, you can use the included wall adapter, go in here first and then into the cradle and just plug it directly into the wall. So two options there to charge your flash. So that's everything that's inside the box. Let's take a look at the physical features of the V860 version three. So your included carrying case here is a little bit different than some of the other ones you might have seen. Before we had the pouch where we could put the flash foot and it's just a little bit hidden here. So I just wanted to show you, this is kind of a belt strap or you can strap this onto your uh, camera bag if you want, but it is Velcroed at the bottom. So we can just undo that Velcro actually. And that exposes the flash pocket there or the foot pocket I should say. And you can slide that in there. I like to keep it in there because I'm not using it all the time and otherwise I'm going to lose that. So again, just drop it in the back and then you can easily take out your flash and we can insert the battery. So the very first thing you're gonna notice about the new version three versus the version two is the battery. So this is the new battery, which is actually the same battery as the V1, so they are compatible. And this is the older version two battery. So you can see we've gone to a square to a rectangle. Unfortunately, they're not the same, but the capacity is increased in the new battery and that is why it has been changed. So to install this battery, um, it's really easy. You'll also notice on the actual flash, it shoots kind of right through here. You can see that that's hollow, just like on the V1. And really you just want to make sure that you line up the pins. You're gonna see on the inside where the pins are there. Um, so you don't want to try to ram it in the wrong way and it won't actually fit that way if you do. So just line it in, slide it, it's going to lock. And then on the other side here is our release. So if you push that button, you just need to push it out the other side to release it. So that's how you install the new battery. The next new feature you're going to notice is the front. I've grabbed the version two here just so you can see. And on the version three, we now have an LED light that will project out of here, which is awesome. It's going to help in low light situations, see where you're aiming, see where the shadows are falling a little bit. It's not a video light or anything, but it is very helpful when we are using the speed light. Um, from there, you're going to notice the new lock as well. So this is very similar to Canon users. It's basically the same thing. It's a flip lever lock that you would just slide over and there's a little uh, release there you push in to lock and unlock that. That's a big improvement because a lot of people found this little wheel dial difficult to reach when it was installed on your camera because the space wasn't very good. So you're trying to get your fingers in there, figure out which way you're twisting it. So a really nice improvement on this. Another new feature that's not apparent immediately is the tilt feature. So on the version two, we could tilt forward like that but on the back tilt, we were basically limited to vertical there. We could get around that by twisting it, but it's kind of annoying when you're walking around, you just need to do a quick tilt and bounce that off the ceiling or off a wall or something. With the new version, it's really nice. So we can go from our negative seven degrees and we can bounce all the way back to 120 degrees. So that's really nice. We don't have to twist it around anymore. And you can see there, just what a difference that is. So you may not use that, but for a lot of shooters, that's a very invaluable feature. 
Another new feature that you're going to see is this little switch here. You might initially think that's for the battery, but it's not actually. This is a quick switch to change from manual to TTL mode. So you can still do it through the menu, but this is just really quick. If you're on the fly, you don't wanna go through the menu system, you need to get the shot quick, flip it to TTL, flip it to manual, and that's going to change the menu system automatically for you. Now down the side, just below that, we have our ports and you just need to basically use your fingernail. There's kind of a weather sealing uh, rubber there. So you just need to gently pull that out because it is attached. So it can be a little tricky to get out there if you don't have long fingernails. Okay, so pull that out. And under there we have our USB port. So that is going to be used for updating firmware. And then just uh, below that, or actually above that, we have our 2.5 mil PC sync port. So if you're still using a legacy trigger, you want to connect that to your camera directly, you can still do it. But the best thing about this flash is that it is completely wireless if you pick up the optional controller, which we're going to explain in a few minutes. On the exterior of the flash, we still have our bounce card and that is taken out. Just get your fingernail under that little lip there, pull that out and you wanna pull this out gently. We have a lot of people that just rip those in a rush because they're trying to get a shot or something. Pull it out gently and you won't have any issue. So you've got two options. If I let that go, that's going to add the wide angle diffuser there and then leave the bounce card. If you don't want either of those, so you could slide the card in, but the only way to get it back out is to click that back in and then pull out. So I could just slide the wide angle and then just leave the bounce if I wanted to that way. Um, one thing to mention about that is if you do use that, as soon as this is pulled out, the flash knows that, and it's going to move your zoom to wide angle at 14 millimeters. So just be aware of that. If you're stuck on that zoom and you don't know why, flip this back in and then you can do the full range, which is 20 millimeters to 200. Okay guys, so I've grabbed an old trusty Nikon camera here, and I'm just gonna show you how to put this on. It's very self-explanatory, but, just to be aware, when this lock is on the left side, it is in the open position. When it switches over, this is the locked position. So you need to be very careful that you are not trying to insert this onto the hot shoe in the locked position. What this actually does, it retracts a pin in here. And if you try to force it on, you are gonna bend that pin and possibly damage your hot shoe. So again, on the left-hand side, then just line it up, obviously, and slide it on there. Once it's in there nice and firm, just take your switch, move it over, you're gonna feel it lock into place. You need to be particularly careful, Sony users, because you have that smart hot shoe, um, which has the electronic connections in the front. So just be very careful that you are not forcing it uh, in there. Just make sure you look. If it's in the right side there over here, then it is in the locked and you just need to move it over to the left side. Okay guys, we're ready to turn on the flash and we do that just with our switch here, slide it up. It's gonna turn on very quickly um, and it's gonna beep there. That just says, okay, I'm ready to flash and we're good to go. So one thing we wanna do, I'm just going to point the head this way a little bit. So when we flash it, I won't get blinded here. Now TTL, that's the mode we're gonna start in and that's just another word for automatic. So if you're a new shooter, you might be shooting in this mode. Essentially the camera and the flash are going to talk to each other and it's going to pick an exposure for you. Now that exposure might be off a little bit and the great thing is that we can adjust that. So if we go over to this wheel here, this is actually a wheel but it's also a button as well. So you'll see these four uh, little icons there and we can actually push. So we're gonna push the plus minus on the left and you're going to see it highlighted there. And that just means we can add exposure compensation. So if the picture that the camera decided and the flash decided was too dim, we can add exposure compensation, brighten it up to plus three, or we can darken it down to minus three. So you can play around with that, but be sure when you do that, that you set it back to zero. 
And then to get out of there, we're just pushing that center button and now we're out of the flash exposure compensation. Let's take a look at the zoom now. So the A indicates automatic mode and the 50 millimeters matches up to the lens that I have on there right now, which is a 50 millimeter prime. If you have a different lens, as you zoom it in and out, it's going to adjust all the way from 20 millimeters to 200 and it's just trying to match the field of view of your lens. So if you zoom in to 200, it's going to be a tighter beam, and if you zoom out, it's a wider beam. And you'll hear that as we go. It's actually a physical diaphragm that's moving forward and back in the actual flash head here. So to control this, we hit the mode button on the wheel dial there, and we are highlighted on the top. As I go to the right, it's automatically going to go to 20 millimeters because I have just jumped into manual mode and I can see that because of the M there. From there, I can go all the way up to 200 or all the way back down to 20, but if I roll back to the left past 20, it's going to go back into automatic mode automatically. So a good place I like to leave it is right around 50 millimeters unless you're getting very specific or you need to project the light really far outside or something. And that's a great place to kind of start. So if you want to shoot at the widest angle possible, we have our wide angle diffuser that will slide out of the front, which I showed you before. So as soon as that is pulled out, all of a sudden we see that go into manual and we go to 14 millimeters. Now, if I go back into my zoom, there's no way to adjust that. It seems stuck. So pay attention here. You want to put this back in. It's got to slide all the way. So I didn't click it there. I slid it in, but as soon as I click it, we're back to our 50 millimeters and then we can get back into our zoom control. So if you're not shooting wide angle, then just leave that wide diffuser contained inside the flash head. So the other thing we have on screen here is TCM. And just so you know, anytime you see something on the bottom here, it's indicated, or you can control it, I should say, by the button underneath. So if I go click TCM, that's going to do my conversion. So what is TCM? Basically, I think Godox called it TCM because it means TTL converted to manual. So if you want a quick way of finding what a TTL shot is in manual power settings, then you can do this. So what I need to go do is take a shot and then I would go and hit the TCM button. So it's saying that that TTL shot was one 256 power at f5.6 on my camera. So if I want a reference point, now I know, okay, that TTL is actually 1256. And depending where you focus your camera, that's going to change. So you always just need to take that reference shot um, before you hit the TCM button. And you'll notice that it changed to manual. So if you want to go back, you can just hit the TCM button there and we're back in TTL. This is also a good time to show you that slide button that was on the top of the flash. So over here, I'm in TTL, and if I flip that, I can go to manual really quick. So if you don't wanna go into the menu, that's another way that we can switch modes there. So moving right along, we are going to check out another mode here. So I can go down to my wheel again and click mode and that is going to take me to manual. So in manual, you just have full control of your flash. So no longer is the flash and the camera deciding which exposure, you are now deciding that. And we can see our power level here, which is 1256, which is the lowest power setting that this flash goes down to. And if I want to control that power, I go over to my plus minus on the wheel, click it, it's going to be highlighted and now we can adjust the power in one tenth increments as well. So I can go all the way from one to 56, all the way up to one over one, which is going to be full power. So as you get more comfortable with your flash or you're shooting this in studio, you're naturally going to graduate to this mode because now you're in full control and you don't have the flash and camera telling you which exposure it should be. And that's especially important if you're shooting a portrait or a product shot or something, and you want the flash to be at that consistent power level every single time. 
So other than that, we still have our zoom up there, but you can see that it has switched to manual because now we're taking the automatic mode out of it. It will still go to 200, but it will not go back into automatic until I switch the mode back um, to TTL. And you'll notice I'm highlighted on there, so I can't actually get out of there. If you're stuck, just hit the center button when something is highlighted, it'll get out of there, and then we can hit our mode and then it'll flip through the different modes. Now we're back in TTL. So in manual mode, there's really not much to it. Just adjust the power with their plus minus, back and forth, wherever we want. You'll notice sync down here. What that does is control the sync. And every camera is going to do this a little bit differently. We're using a Nikon here. And most Nikons, if not all of them, will automatically switch to high speed sync once you move the shutter speed over its native or over the camera's native shutter speed, which on this Nikon is 1 250th of a second. So that just means very simply, if I go over 250, what you're gonna see show up in the top right here is H, and it'll still be a little H with a lightning bolt, which indicates high speed sync. So that just allows you to shoot all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second on most cameras. And again, most cameras are gonna do this automatically, so I don't actually have to go into the sync here and turn it on manually. But if you have a camera where you're rolling past that shutter speed and you're not seeing that show up, then you can just go in and activate it manually um, just by pushing the sync button there. You'll know you're in it because that H shows up. Even though the Nikon version does not show it down here, this flash actually supports flash exposure bracketing and it also supports uh, second curtain sync. So on other versions, they would be controlled down here. We'll throw up a Canon in a second just to show you that. But on the Nikon and several other versions, both of those functions are controlled just from the camera. So you would just go into the menu and activate them that way. So let's move on to multi-mode now. And if I hit my mode button on the dial, you're gonna see RPT. So this is a Nikon flash and that's why it says RPT. Yours might say multi on it as well. So it just depends on the brand, but it's the same thing. As soon as you see these times in the Hertz show up, we know we're in multi-mode. So we still have our power level there, which we can control with our plus minus here, highlight it and adjust it. And then we have our Hertz and our times. So I don't want you to get confused multi-mode with high speed mode on your camera. This is not where we change the camera to shoot 20 frames a second and then we match up this multi-mode to match it. That's not what this is for. It's for capturing one frame with something going through that frame. So like a dancer or a skier or something, um, it captures kind of the sequence of events in that one frame. And the way we control that is with the time. So remember the buttons on the bottom here, they control what's ever indicated above. So times, this is how many flashes we want to fire. So let's say I wanna fire uh, 10 flashes and then we are going to go to our Hertz and we can adjust our Hertz. Now this mode is best used at lower power levels because if I go up to, let's change our power level for example to quarter, that's as high as we can go actually because if you go higher than that, the flash cannot keep up. And right here, we're going to be limited on how many flashes we can actually fire. So you see I'm maxed out at two and I can't go anymore. That's why this is best used at lower power levels. And there's actually a chart um, on the website, you can download the manual there, where it gives you a reference point of how many times and how many hertz at what power levels you should be setting that to. Um, but just for example, let's back that back down. We wanna shoot, we said 10 shots at nine hertz, let's just leave it there. So let's run a test fire here. We've got our 10 times and our nine hertz, which essentially just means we're going to fire 10 flashes at a rate of nine flashes per second. So that's basically what hertz means there. So if I hit the test button, you're gonna see that fire and it's going to multi-burst those out. So another useful on-camera feature of the flash is the autofocus assist beam. So the way that we activate that is we go into the menu and that's over here. 
push menu and I had already turned it on, but right here, AF, if we hit the middle button, we can scroll between on and off. So with this on, what it does is it's going to project a red kind of snowflake pattern that you can see there. And what that does is help you focus. So if you're in a dimly lit room, you're at an event, there's not enough light there, it's going to help your camera and prevent it from hunting too much. So just make sure you either turn that on or turn it off if you don't wanna be hitting all of your guests with that red projection on their faces every time, then you can turn it off, but it's very useful in the event that you need it. Now let's get into some of our wireless control options. This flash has a transmitter built in it and it also has a receiver. So the nice thing, if you are on camera and you don't have a separate remote, we can actually control um, receiver flashes with this transmitter. So the way that we get into it is this little zigzag button here, push it once there, and now we are into the control mode. So up in the top left, you're gonna see that little wireless symbol, that antenna, that means we are in the proper mode. And then we have a bunch of other stuff happening onto the screen here. So first off, we have our channel, and then we have a list of our groups. Now, you need to make sure that you set any of the receiver flashes to the same channel. And let me just show you how to do that really quickly if you want to change this channel. So we're gonna go back into our menu here and we're going to scroll down until we get to our channel. So we're set to 21 there. I would just highlight it and then I can select whichever channel I want. So we're not using any of those right now, but let's just set it to 10, and then we can get back out of the menu in here. So very important, this is not gonna work unless your channels and your groups match up on the receiving units. Okay, so we set our channel. Now we are going to play around with the groups, and the groups are all controlled down here. We have M, A, B, C, there, now if you're using a Canon, it's gonna look a little bit differently and we'll show you that later, but most of the flashes like Fuji, Sony, everything are gonna look very similar to this. So M is for the flash that we have on the actual camera. The dotted line right here indicates that those groups are turned off. So if I wanna turn this flash on, I can. I go to the M, hit it underneath, and now you can see that that changed. I can change the mode from TTL. I still have my exposure compensation, so I can dial that in plus or minus three like we saw before. Or I can go in, change this to manual mode, then adjust the power however I want. Or the great thing about this system is that I don't have to have this flash fire. It will still transmit to the other flashes, even if I set this one to not fire. Now let's say I want to control A, I'm just going to go to A, and again, you can see that the A changes there. So to change the mode, I'm just hitting that button again, TTL, manual, and I can go through each group, change them however I want. So this is a very powerful tool that you can use to control additional speed lights, but it doesn't have to be just speed lights. Anything Godox that uses uh, the Godox wireless system, so if you had some other strobes, like maybe an AD400 or an AD600, you can control them just as easy. So that's just a brief overview. I should mention though, um, even though if you're a controller, you might notice you, if you have a separate controller, it has more groups than that. The reason why we only show the ABC group there is because those are the only three that can control TTL. If you want more groups available, you can use a separate controller, but just remember they will not be able to use TTL on more than three groups. So there are a couple of other ways that we can fire this flash remotely. So just assume that we were to have this flash off camera, but we need to go back to manual mode. So I'm just going to turn the wireless off for a second here and change our mode back to manual. Now you're gonna see this S1, S2 there. And that's just another way to optically trigger this. And actually, it's the only way to optically trigger this. So if I push S1, you're going to see S1 show up on the right side of the screen. Now this flash, if it was off camera, would be looking for another flash to trigger it. 
A lot of times that would be a pop-up flash if your camera happened to have one or another strobe or essentially any light will trigger this if it's a flash burst. So that's great if you're in a small space and you're in a home studio or something. But if you're at an event and trying to trigger optically like this, anyone's flash is going to fire yours, which can be really annoying. You're gonna lose control. And I should also mention that this only works by line of sight. So if the flashes can't see each other essentially, then it's not going to fire. So that's why using the wireless modes um, with a separate controller are a much better option than this. If I push this again, it's going to go to S2. And that's just another optical mode, but essentially what this does is it ignores the pre-fire flash um, from like Red Eye or TTL, and it's going to fire in sync with it. Not used very often, but it is there if you need it. Now, one other mode that we can do, and it's not really a mode at all actually, but we can plug a PC sync cable into the 2.5 millimeter port, and you could run a cable into your camera if your camera had a PC sync port. Again, both of these methods are kind of old and outdated now. Because these flashes are so advanced now, it really makes sense to purchase that optional remote or use this as the controller itself on the flash for other ones. So there you have it. There's a few more ways to trigger this flash. So here's how we change this flash into a receiving flash and trigger it wirelessly. Let's go into our wireless control here again, flip past commander, and now we're in our receiver mode here. And that's indicated by the RX and the screen has actually changed color. So what we want to do is make sure that our channel is set to our controller. So in this mode, again, this flash is gonna be off camera. You're going to have a controller uh, on your camera and fire it that way. But we need to make sure this is set up properly first. So right here, is our group mode so you can see we're on a there and you can flip by just keep pushing it if you want or you could use the wheel to change it as well so we'll just set it to it doesn't really matter what we set it to you can lock it in there by pushing the middle button um, and our channel is right beside it so if we wanted to change that channel again like we did uh, from the menu last time we can do it quickly here We'll just leave it there for right now. And then we have our sync button again where you could activate high speed sync if you needed to, but again, most cameras are going to do that automatically. So from here, the only other thing that we can set if we wanted to would be the zoom, but if we're using the controllers, we can do it right from there. So it's really not important to set the zoom uh, on the back of the flash. So this is where you would grab a number of flashes. You can set them to different groups. If you set them on the same group, they're gonna to fire together, which is often useful if you're trying to shoot you know, a flash on each side of the background. You could sync those on uh, channel or group A, and then you'd have your main light on B, your fill light on C, and you've got a complete setup there. So that's really all there is to it. Make sure though that uh, when you're done that, if you were gonna put it back on your flash or on your camera, I should say, that you change the mode back and disable the wireless that way. Or if we're going into the main controller mode there, you can do that as well. Now I've grabbed a controller and put it on the camera here just to kind of quickly demonstrate how we use the controller and a receiver flash. Now I should mention that we have in-depth tutorials on the X2T and the X-Pro controllers. So we'll link those in the description below. This is just a quick overview of how to set the channel in the groups. The other video goes through absolutely everything. So we set our channel in our group previously on the flash. So we're set at channel one and group A there. Now we just need to make sure that that matches over on our controller. So using the X2T, we're going to go into the menu and we just hit the menu button here. And we're going to, going to scroll down until we find our channel. So I was kind of in the middle there. Let's grab that right here so channel once we find that or highlight it we hit set and we can adjust the channel as necessary with the scroll dial to get out just hit set again and we are good to go 
I should mention that uh, you'll see ID there, and it's also available on the flash, which I'm going to show you in a minute in the menu system. Normally we recommend not setting this because oftentimes people forget, maybe you set an ID on one of them and then you forgot to set it on the flash for example, and then they're not going to talk to each other. You have 32 channels, otherwise uh, chances are you're not going to have interference, so I would recommend just leaving ID off. Uh, to get out of the menu, we're just going to hit menu again and now we are ready to select our group. But before we do that, what I want to do is just hit the test button on the controller and all of a sudden you're going to see something show up over here which says Nikon. So the flash is smart enough to know that it is using a Nikon controller. The great thing about these flashes is that they can actually be used with different brands. So as long as I've got my Nikon camera with my Nikon controller, this flash could be a Sony, and as soon as I hit that test button, it's still gonna say Nikon on that Sony flash, or whatever flash it happens to be. So that way you just don't have to go and replace all your flashes if you happen to change from Nikon to Sony, for example. They'll go with you, and they work that way. Remotely, um, obviously the TTL pins are a bit different, so they wouldn't do TTL on camera. But that's just an added benefit of these flashes. So to control our group, I would just go over onto the top of this X2T and push the A group. You're gonna see it highlight there, and now I can go to the scroll wheel, and you can see the power changing. Now just make sure on your flash that you can go into, actually on the controller, go into the menu and make sure that it's set to 1, 256 on the scale mode, because otherwise this is only gonna go down to 1 over 128. If it's set there, we'll just see where this one's, yeah, so you can see that it stops at 1 1 28th, and that is because that's where I have this controller set. So make sure you go in and change that. It's really easy to do. Hit the menu, and then we're just going to go in until we see our control mode right here. So our step mode, I hit set, and I'm just going to change that to 1 2 56, set, and get out of our menu. Just hit the test, make sure we're synced up. And now when I go and select my A group, I can actually go lower. You see it goes down to 1256. So if you get stuck and you're like, why is that not going any lower? That is the reason why that feature is available in both the X2T and the X-Pro controller. But other than that, guys, that is how you control it. So you can see how easy it would be to add additional flashes to like the B group. We would just select them. We can change our mode right from our camera here if we had those attached and just adjust them as necessary. We can also do TTL uh, remotely, which is great. So I can hit mode again here. I was on TTL, but TTL, we have our exposure compensation if you want it. Really, there's unlimited ways to use these flashes remotely. And again, I highly, highly recommend picking up this very inexpensive controller, either the X2T or the X-Pro, and that's really gonna unlock all the features of this flash. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the video, the custom functions menu. So you might not use these a lot, but let's go over them anyway. We activate it by pushing the menu button here. And before we get started, let's take a look up in the top right, it says version 1.0. This is a brand new flash just out on the market. So at the time of this video, this is the first firmware version. As we go along, um, there are going to be more releases, so the menu might change a little bit. Um, but if you want the latest firmware, just go to the StroPro website. You can go under the help desk and we have a video showing you how to update it or bring it into the store and we'll do it at no charge for you. So first of all, we have meters and feet. So if you wanna go into imperial or metric, you would just highlight that, hit the middle button, and we can change from feet or from meters into feet, hit set, and then that backs us out. Now we're gonna use the scroll dial. We talked about autofocus before. Um, if you're using it on camera, it's definitely nice to have on. You can turn it on and off there. Standby. So this will turn off the flash screen after uh, 90 seconds. So if you're using it remotely, that's 
fine but if it's on your camera and you're walking around you want to see that quickly it can be annoying sometimes to have that but it's just to save battery so you can turn that on or off again hit the middle button use the dial to set wherever you want now this is receiver standby the next one go down there and you can set that from 60 minutes or 30 minutes so when you're using this as an off-camera flash if it's been sitting there for more than 30 minutes it's going to basically put it into power save mode but you can still wake it up by using the controller just hit the test fire button or if it's on your camera and you fire the flash it's going to wake it up as well going down from there oh, i keep going too far but there we go so this is channel scan. So we can do this in our controller if we purchase that separately. We have a scan in the X2T. It's not available in the X-Pro. What this does, and I'll activate it here, this is for wireless. So if I wanna find the best possible channel, if I go and hit start, this starts scanning um, the environment that we're in. It's looking for the best channel. Now it's not automatically gonna change to that channel for you, but it is going to generate a little list of the channels that you should use. So if we just wait for a second, it finishes there. It gives us that list of channels and that's saying, use one of these channels, they have the least interference. You don't have to, most of the time it's fine, but you can uh, play around with that scan on the flash or you could use the X2T. Uh, scrolling down, we're on our channel now, so we can set that right here or I showed you if you're using it remotely, there's also that quick way to do it there. Here's our ID, which I just spoke about. You don't usually need to do this, but if you set it, this goes all the way up to 99. So it just adds those additional, um, it's like a secondary channel basically, which just extends the uh, possibility of not getting any interference on there. So, but make sure if you're not going to be using this, that that is set to off. Otherwise, you're gonna be very confused why you cannot get these to talk to each other. Uh, the beep, this is one you might use sometimes. Uh, with it off, when I fire the flash, you're not getting that beep. If I change it, I go to on. Now when I fire, it recycles and beeps every time. So that can get annoying if you're taking a lot of shots. This recycles so fast anyway that I really don't think that you need it on. Uh, the battery version, sometimes it's nice to have that. I should mention that this flash actually recycles at full power at 1.5 seconds, and you'll get up to 480 full power flashes, which is a big improvement over the last one as well. And again, most people aren't using their flash at full power, so you could easily get over a thousand flashes off of a single charge. Uh, moving on from the beep, we have our light, and this is the light on the back of the screen here. I have it set to on right now for the video because I don't want this backlight turning off, but I can set it to 12 seconds where most people would leave it, so you can make your adjustments. It's going to turn off after 12 seconds, or you can just leave it off completely. And then we have our LCD contrast. Honestly, I don't find this very effective at all, but you could adjust it. It makes it little bit of a difference I guess uh, usually I don't touch that um, to get back out we can just hit uh, menu or we can hit this back button here and that's going to get us back out now if you've screwed something up so bad that you don't know which way is up what you've changed you're stuck you can't figure it out you'll see this RST right here if you push those two buttons together hold them for a second it's going to reset. You'll see reset come across the bottom. Now it's reset everything back to its defaults and you can start over uh, eliminating any of those errors that you might have had. Now I've thrown on a V860 Canon version. I just wanted to show you a couple of quick uh, differences here on the Canon flash. And we're in the commander mode here. And you're gonna see before we add the first group as M on our Nikon and most of the other flashes are M as well. On Canon it's A. And it's a little bit annoying on the Canon because if I go into the A group, I cannot disable this from firing. 
So it's always going to fire and expose that um, flash power going out of it. If I go into the menu though, there's a way to disable that. Um, so I would hit menu, go into the custom functions, and you're gonna scroll down to this TX here. So if you see TX, in there I can turn it on and off. So you see the little flash beam kind of coming out of that symbol, flip between them. If I select it, uh, if I turn it off, then this flash will not fire when it's on the A group in the commander mode. So that's just a little uh, quick tip for the Canon version of this flash. Here is another specific Canon function. We have exp flash exposure bracketing right here, and if I click that button, it's going to come up. You're gonna see the little symbol. So what this does, if I turn the dial, it'll go all the way from zero to three, and in between is third stops. So let's just set it to one, for example. This is going to fire a flash at the zero exposure, so kind of the neutral. It's gonna take one at negative one stop, and then positive one stop if I set it there. Same difference if I go to um, plus two or plus three, same thing, and it's automatically gonna take those three shots and it's going to count up on there. Now normally after you take those three shots, it's going to reset, but if you don't want it to reset, you can actually go into the menu here and this is Canon specific again, we're going to scroll down to flash exposure bracketing, auto cancel. So you can go in there, turn it on or off, and there you have it, that is another specific Canon feature. I mentioned previously how on the Nikon and most other camera brands that if you want to enable high speed sync, it automatically does it. Canon is a little bit different. We actually have to manually go in and set that. So that's where the sync is very important, whether in manual or TTL mode, it doesn't matter. I go to the sync button here, push it once. Now I'm in high speed sync. You can also set this into rear curtain sync if you want. That's indicated by those little arrows up there. And if I push it again, I just go back into first curtain sync here. Um, so just remember, if you're using Canon, you need to set this manually, either through your camera menu or in the flash directly. So there you have it. That's everything you need to know about the Godox V860 version three. Godox has added a lot of new features, including the LED light, increased capacity in the battery, a new lock, a whole new menu system. It's really a great flash that's improved from the version two. So pick this one up, make sure you pick up an optional controller if you don't have one already. This is going to fit directly into your Godox system. So it'll work with your strobes, your other speed lights that you have. And it's really a nice fit if you're using it on camera or remotely. So until next time, I'm Jesse, enjoy creating.